solid design principles is a uh, patterns which you need to be follow while we are developing an application so mostly uh, solid design principles like a uh, 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 single responsibility open for extension close for modifications uh, list scop substitutions interface segregations and all so it's a combination of this all uh, so while we develop uh, so uh, these things we need to follow like uh, interface segregation mm -hmm. so uh, and uh, list scop substitutions and all uh, things we mm -hmm. have to follow okay okay all right so uh, have you got a chance to use any one of them in your uh, day to day schedule I mean, like working with uh, which one creating any large up. So, have you got a chance to use any one of them while developing any large applications? Yeah, while we developing large applications, mostly uh, we have uh, like uh, 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 these all things we use like uh, interface segregation. Mostly we are using, and then uh, uh, this one uh, open for extensions and close for modifications. Like this, all things okay. we are doing. This. Okay. Okay. Cool. Great. Um, cool. And what are the creational design patterns are? Uh, yeah. In this, uh, we have a. There are four type of design patterns are there, like a creational structures and all structures. So we have a gang of four inside that we have a creational. So creational mm -hmm. design patterns are uh, like. Uh, uh, which will be used to create a object uh, or uh, for the testing purpose so mostly we have a builders design pattern i think uh, builders mm -hmm. and then uh, factory i think also factory design patterns and all so this this while we are using while we created a multiple objects and all suppose if you are writing any test cases for that you need a common object creations to check the validations of the particular method so we have a multiple method are there in different different scenario like positive and negative so in that cases what will happen we will create a builder design pattern so that builder design patterns will build that and uh, whatever the common functionality which will be called through this so these all are i think part of creation okay all right um cool what are the types of cloning present in java and Mm, yeah in java cloning uh, cloning means like a clone object right yes okay so one is the clone like uh, we have a clone uh, uh, method as there so the single in duplicate instance will be created uh, by using clone method and uh, what are the types of cloning available in java uh, cloning not sure I think. okay not sure um all right Okay. Uh, how we can find out if a program has a deadlock? Yeah. So uh, deadlock like uh, situations which will be occur like we have a multiple threads are there and uh, this all thread is trying to execute uh, or perform a operation. So uh, these all are blocked in each others like once uh, at a time only one thread will be work and others all three thread will be in waiting condition. So this thread will release the lock then only the other thread will uh, start working on that so if mm -hmm. in this situation what will happen suppose uh, deadlock if all the thread is waiting for each other's uh, confirmations and all so in that cases we will find deadlock situation mm -hmm. so how uh, we okay. will, yeah how we will do uh, this one by using uh, a synchronous call or by using synchronous call we have to uh, uh, write this uh, like uh, we have a thread life cycle, we have a sleep, wait and all. So once uh, we will uh, everywhere uh, like all the thread we have to uh, like a stop and others only one thread will be uh, worked. So based on that mm -hmm. method we will uh, find this situation. Okay, alright. Uh, what is countdown latch? Okay, countdown latch is the part of uh, thread only. Uh, so on 
Mostly will be used for this, I think. Uh, uh, I think mostly used for this. Uh, uh, to complete this task, like while we have a thread, uh, not sure exactly, but uh, uh, if we have a multiple thread, uh, then they will uh, create uh, some task and all. लोडिंग लाइक uh that will be uh taken from this uh main object and uh, eager loading will have a create a instance of object and then it will be called mm -hmm. okay so can you give an example of lazy streams okay so lazy streams uh... yeah suppose we have a, if i have a employee class and that in employee class will have a employee uh, details so that in details uh, yeah employee details so in that employee details if i'll uh, fetch the details by using a stream uh, api in java 8 or uh, by using a stream so so what will happen like uh, the employee uh, which has been created uh, the exact employee like we have created an employee object in that employee object we are getting the employee detail based on the reference so that reference uh, lazy loading what will happen based on this reference only they will call they will not create a, a copy of the object for this employee object or based on that uh, directly they will call through this uh, reference only by using mm -hmm. lazy loading so it will be uh, loaded from this database uh and uh, directly uh, that will be hit uh, the database uh, always or every time mm -hmm. okay all right cool uh, what is meta space ah uh, yeah meta space is a part of jvm architecture uh, where uh, uh, we need uh, uh for this uh, space uh, Space, uh, is part of, I think it's a part of uh, JVM uh, where we 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 have a, like uh, and and all. In that cases we are using meta space to, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, no. Okay, all right. Um, what is the predicate? predicate mhm mm okay predicate and consumer yeah yeah predicate is used for like uh, a predicate mostly is used for the functional programming uh, like uh, in java 8 we have a predicate consumers and all consumers so predicate will check like either is this conditions is uh, true or false so in that cases uh, we have a only one input will be there and that will be check the conditions so consumers we have a only one uh, uh, input and there will be no output and supplier will have a uh, single outputs and all and function will have a input mm -hmm. and return type like this so we need to check a predicate uh, while we are writing a, a steam api operations to fetch the details for this using a java 8 by using functional interface or lambda expression in that cases mostly we use predicate functions supplier and consumers Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um. Cool. Look, okay. and what is the difference between map and flat map? Yeah, map is used to like uh, this is a part of collection framework where we have to store the data based on the key and value. So map is used uh to uh fetch the detail of employee, uh where we have a list of single employee. So we have a list. 
where employee details is there like id name salary department and all and flat map is used to office the details of employee which have a list of employee like inside that we have a employee 1 employee 2 employee 3 so either list of employees so we have a main then 10 employee 20 employees and all in that cases we can go for the flat map so that flat map will face the detail from the list of employee inside this employee table okay all right cool um coming to spring boot and uh, spring mvc so what is the difference between bean and component bean and component yeah uh, in the spring boot we have a bean and component so component is used like suppose if you are doing some uh, you are creating a class so that class have a controller class either maybe service class or repository class and all so in that cases either we are annotating with at the rate component annotation or at the rate the uh, controller or at the rate service or at the rate repository so component like uh, if you are annotating with the component or uh, at the rate component so that class will behave like anything either we have a service controller or anything so that is not defined you can use for any type of operations uh, that is called component mm -hmm. and then bean uh, is used for the like suppose if you are creating any object and all so while creating we have a bean life cycle in a spring so uh, spring uh, bean will be initialized while you are creating a uh, any uh, object for that so you mm -hmm. which need to be called from one class to another class and all so in that cases you need to like uh, application context equal ac equal to new application context uh, either cfg or xml and all so in that cases what okay. will happen beans will be created and according to that beans initialization will happen so we have a bean life cycle which will be initialized this bin and then uh, mm -hmm. initialized and after init this uh, bin and after that it will be initialized and then we have a create operations or a, a, any operations will be performed and then uh, mm -hmm. destroy the pin. So this type of life cycle which will be called so that our operations will be created and according to that our internal logic will perform. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, okay. What is the use of at the rate primary annotation? Uh, primary, secondary, and foreign. Okay. Uh, yeah. At the rate primary annotations means uh, which will be used in at the rate primary annotation which will be used in uh, and uh, while you are uh, creating a uh, entity class where uh, database communications attribute will be there so in that cases uh, we have at the rate primary annotation means this type of attribute which which will be not null and that unique will be there so whatever the data you are writing like employee id so that id mm -hmm. which not will null and uh, unique will be there so there will be not duplicates and all so that cases we need to annotate at the rate primary annotation mm -hmm. okay all right cool uh, what is the auto configuration and how does it works auto configuration yeah so a spring boot have a enable auto configurations uh, is there so if you are using at the rate spring boot application annotation so internally we have three annotations this is already work suppose if you are writing directly enable auto configuration or auto configurations so like we have a multiple uh, independent jars or uh, other things features which need to be added in microservices or a spring boot application like database configuration or kafka or any redis cases and all so for that what you are doing you are uh, adding the property in your application.yml file or uh, adding the uh, dependency in pom.xml so based on that respective jars will be loaded and the whatever the configurations you have done according to that you need to create a uh, one config class like suppose if you are writing for redis cases then you have to write the redis case configuration class or mongo template configuration class which will be connect your database so this layer from service layer to connect to database so if you are writing this one so in that what we have to do at the rate auto configuration so whatever the respective configurations you have written in this ml file or property file that will be automatically will configure with your uh, uh, dependency uh, based on this like suppose mm -hmm. if you use mongo template and then mongo related uh, user id password and all so that will be configured so that you, uh, directly you can use this uh, uh, this configuration in your repository classes to auto wire these configurations and then directly you can access the database so that's why automatically that will be configured no need to do uh, uh, like uh, users to do manually so that's why we use uh, this configuration so notice okay all right cool uh, so what are the annotations are being called internally here uh, at the rate enable auto configuration right 
Mm-hmm. Uh, internally, so, uh, suppose if you are using at the rate Spring Boot application, then we have a, a auto configuration. At the rate enable auto configuration and component scan will be called internally. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell it. Uh, how we can disable the auto configuration? Yeah, so if you want to disable the auto configuration, then in uh, Spring Boot main application is there inside. Uh, you have to uh, write enable auto configuration and exclude uh, is a uh, uh, exclude equal to false or true. So if you will mention mm-hmm. exclude, then that will be uh, disabled. Okay, cool. Uh, what is at the rate uh, configuration properties annotation? At the rate configuration property annotation. Yeah, configuration property annotation. The same way, uh, like uh, at the rate configuration property annotations is used to configure all the properties. Like uh, if you have defined this one, uh, like uh, all the data structures, so that data structures related uh, things you have ID, name, salary, ID, ID, sorry, user ID, password, driver name, and then uh, driver name, and then. Uh, maybe this this these all things so you have written in this uh, 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 template mongo template classes uh, so there uh, you have to uh, mention at the rate configuration property so that will be mapped with the uh, your application property field and your class field name mm-hmm. okay all right cool um coming to hibernate so have you got a chance to work with hibernate mm, yeah be, yes most of the things i worked on hibernate and jpa Okay, great. So let's cover a few questions. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. So what is the difference between get and load? Okay. Yeah, so get and load will use to fetch the details from the database, which have to communicate to employee records. Uh, so get will be loaded from this uh, to load through the database directly and get and load you tool, right? get or load or get and load okay get get versus load method yeah yeah so get let get get method will load this uh like get method will call the database uh, directly whatever the request per time request will happen from the uh service implementation every time it will hit the database so that and load mm-hmm. method will have a instance so if you uh, first time you hit it the database then they will have a caches which you have created and uh, if second time again the same request or query which will be called so they will not hit the database they have to reference through that they will fetch the detail mm-hmm. okay cool and how we can enable the uh, the second level cache in hibernate yeah by default second level cache will be disabled in hibernate if you want to enable uh, we have a application dot property there you have to uh, mention enable uh, the second level caches as a true so because by default it will be false so if you want you can enable based on that. so okay. in the property file we have to do okay all right cool um what is uh hibernate proxy and how does it works okay hibernate proxy uh yeah so hibernate proxy will be uh, uh Yes, we can create a Hibernate proxy, but I'm not sure, but uh, we can enable or disable the proxy. So internally, I think uh, not exactly. I'm not sure exactly. But... Okay, no issues. Uh, have you got a chance to work with a Spring Batch? Yeah. Okay, so uh, when was the last time you're working or? Two years, two years before I worked on this Spring Batch uh, when uh, we have a schedulers which will run this uh, schedule jobs and according to that they have to create a, uh, a report. So when I was uh, working on banking and e-commerce platform there we have a multiples customer as uh, taking the orders and all. So after the orders we have a we need to finalize how many orders has been created and what are the orders mm-hmm. has failed and all for that we need to run the batch so that run batch is automated uh, so we have auto batches uh, was there so once this will be run uh, after that we need to create a uh, this reports so that type of things i work 
Okay, cool. So what are the different components of Spring Batch? Okay, different component of a Spring Batch. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, what we have, like uh, I use for a Spring Cloud Bus uh, and then uh, Schedulers uh, and then uh, Cron Job. This one you are asking, right? Mm -hmm. Cron Job I used and then uh, we have uh, some Cron Dictionary was there. So through that we need to add the uh, uh, timings and all and mm -hmm. Schedulers and then Okay, all right. Uh, how does a Spring Batch works? Okay, so a Spring Batch, uh, like uh, once you have uh, added this uh, dependency or application, and after that you you need to create uh, some uh, uh, event for that. Like uh, event, we can say like uh, while uh, uh, this uh, things will operations will happen, like all the orders schedules. Uh, uh, cancels and all things will happen so every uh, 8 o'clock at night we need a uh, details uh, report details so of that so we have a, a spring batch configuration file there we need to define all those things so once the applications will run uh, it will be called the cron job and based on the cron job that will fetch the details and trigger this uh, batch so batch will uh, have a uh, multiples like uh, input file input handler, output handlers and all. So we have a reader, writers and all. Through that, they will read the data, they will write, write the informations. And after that, uh, they have to generate a uh, text file, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. report file. So that report we have uh, some uh, 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 other, uh, we have a uh, report generator tools will be there. Either JAXRS or JAXML was there. Uh, report. So that things internally to work okay all right um okay how we can schedule a job using spring batch yeah okay how we will schedule a job using a spring batch so we need to write a one uh schedulers uh schedulers job in a spring so once you will write this one uh, like uh, once you will write this schedulers batch uh, once you will write a scheduler batch I think uh, like uh, when I was working on this uh, mostly was a spring based application so there I created one batch like a scheduler batch a configuration file there we have annotated with at the rate schedule uh, uh, annotations so after that uh, in a application dot configurations I added this like what are the things uh, parameter need to okay. be added this way okay uh, what is reader in spring batch uh, reader and writer yeah readers will have like uh, uh, whatever the details we need to fetch uh, according to that like uh, suppose we have a multiples huge record has been failed so I need this uh, information based on this uh, batching so uh, readers will read the data so either we have a J J JSON data or maybe some uh, raw data will be there in different format so based on the readers we have to uh, like uh, define this which locations or where is the path uh, so for that either may have a api call and all so based on the read readers we will uh, read the data so we have a read input uh, handler so that read the data and then uh, that will be converted either uh, we have a if we have a json data then we have a, a jgson will be there which will be convert from json to object data and then we have to read the data and that will be convert in our uh, our uh, container or somewhere or and after that we have to process and then write so readers and writers will be used while we use a spring batch okay all right cool um now coming to spring rest so what is the difference between put and patch put is used for mostly uh, uh to modify the operations like suppose if you have already uh, your uh, employee detail is there in the database now you want to modify the sum of the record in that 
or some of the information in that cases we can go for the put and uh, post patch you told right yep and patch is used for, uh, is also for the same way but uh, if you have a bulk of the data and you want some modifications which will be applicable for all the data in that cases we can go for the patch mm -hmm. okay all right cool uh, what is uh, requ requ request mapping annotation request mapping annotations which will be uh, mapped to your data are like uh, in the controller so so either what type of uh, operations which will be performed so request mapping uh, have uh, some uh, you, uh, like uh, some of the uri will be performed like we have a local host http local host slash maybe employee slash and whatever and after that uh, what type of operations http operation will perform either get operation put operation and patch operation okay. or delete so that we we have to do okay uh, what is at the rate response status uh, annotation and why why it is used uh, response status annotations will use for this check the response either as a success failure or maybe created or some errors are out there so in that cases mostly we use uh, so so that uh, our response will show so we have a multiple uh, 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 mm -hmm. response state is also there like 200 is for success 201 was for created 400 for okay. this internal server errors 500 and okay all right um cool <clears throat> uh, coming to database so how comfortable you are working with database uh, yeah, database also I'm working while we are developing any application. So what are the respective uh, operations need to be performed through the database we need to do. And uh, mm -hmm. so that type of work we are working in the database. So mostly we need to do as a CRUD applications based on like uh, face details and uh, operate the data uh, to the customer delete. Okay. So process. what is store procedure? Yeah, a store procedures, functions, uh, package, uh, and uh, uh, these things I worked, uh, not it, but before I worked, uh, through three years back when I was in banking. Uh, so a store procedure is a way which will be create, uh, like uh, suppose if you have a, uh, numerous uh, operations need to be performed uh, for this uh, business logic. So for that you have to create a procedure. So that procedures which will be called uh, before data operations always will call a procedures based on the processes uh, which will be executed and then uh, the data will be created uh, like a, okay so how do we call a store procedure from a Java code okay yeah so how do we call a store procedure from the Java code Uh, store procedure for the java call yeah there is a way uh how we will do okay no shows uh what is a database indexing and how does it works database indexing is used for like to uh to while we are fetching the detail uh, so that will be fasting fastest manner so we need to use a index so index have a like a, which will be defined uh, it's a part of uh, SQL uh, PL sequels uh, so their indexing mostly is used for this to fetch the details uh, as a fastest manner so while you create an index so based on that they will create an index id so that index id will which will be a start from like a, a 0 mm -hmm. 1 2 or maybe depends on so based okay. on that a we have call okay all right uh, what is database view uh, yeah but database view is uh, is a logical or imaginary uh, things uh, logical and imaginary view will be there like uh, we have a table structure which i have created and uh, if you'll check this view, so that will uh, just uh, image things which will be called through this. So we can uh, uh, see the view uh, of the table structures. Okay. 
Okay, and what is full outer join? Full outer join is a combination of two tables. Uh, either one table is employee and uh, other table is a uh, department. So if you are doing the full outer join, so what are the combinations will happen from one outer join, uh, like uh, one table to another table. So these all things will be called. So what are the scenarios from uh, like uh, all the tables. So this all the required uh, result will come from the both table. So inner join will have a uh, only left table. Uh, inner join will have a common details will come. A left uh, outer join will have a, a left outer join only left things and common detail will come. Right outer join right things right tables and common detail will come. And full outer join means all the things will come like left means like first table, second table and all the commons details will be come through the full outer join. Okay, great. Uh, now let's come to the coding part quickly. So. Uh, could you please share your screen and navigate to live coding board? Okay. Are you able to see now? Are you able to see now? Hello. Hello. Yes. Now, can you navigate to live coding board? This one, right? Yeah. Yes. I click on off button. Hmm. Yeah. So you have to use Java to find the duplicates here, okay? Okay. Java program to find the duplicate number from the list. Java program to find the duplicate number, duplicate element from the list. Okay. We have a list integer, integer list, array list of this 